Hello, my name's Mark Higgins from UMETSAT and I am here with the video of the weather from 2015 as seen from space. So what we're showing here is the view from the geostationary ring of satellites. You're seeing data from UMETSAT covering Europe, Africa and the Indian Ocean, data from Japan covering the Pacific and data from America. And it partly shows you the cooperation between these agencies making weather data available 24 hours a day and for every day of the year. Here towards the end of January you can see two cyclones forming in the southern Indian Ocean and you can see how they grow, the eyes then develop really strong and then they dissipate over time. As we move towards the end of January, beginning of February, in the southern Indian Ocean you'll see the storms forming most clearly. So of course we start the year with winter in the northern hemisphere and summer in the southern hemisphere. And you can see the difference between those two seasons clearly. In the north you can see those storms travelling across from west to east, bringing weather across the continental land masses. So you'll see storms travelling across the Atlantic and then travelling across the west of Europe. You can also see the storms travelling across the Pacific towards western Canada, the US and Alaska. As we move into March, we're now in meteorological spring. So we will start to see the change in weather patterns. And what this is to do with is the angle of the sun as it hits the Earth. The sun would have previously been in the southern hemisphere, and it's now moving very slowly towards the north. Again at this time, you can see a number of tropical cyclones, particularly uh, just to the northeast of Australia. Tropical cyclone Pam, around about the 12th of March, was an incredibly strong storm that affected Vanuatu. And just before that, around the 6th of March, there was Tropical Storm 15. And you can see there's a steady flow of storms travelling over towards the Philippines. This shows the importance of having these data so that forecasters are able to predict the storms and effectively warn populations that they are coming. So as we move from March into April, we come to the 1st of April, which is the birthday of monitoring of the Earth from space. The very first meteorological satellite, Tyros-1, was launched on April the 1st. You can see in April the Western Pacific is still active. You'll see storms moving towards the Philippines every so often. The tropical storms themselves require quite warm sea surface temperatures to keep them nice and energetic and moving. If uh, the storm travels over a colder area, that will actually help the storm dissipate and decay. So now for those of us in Europe, you can really see the difference in the sort of weather we're getting. Weather systems that come across the Atlantic are slightly less energetic and you'll start to see as the land warms and there's more convection, these small convective storms now starting to kick off from the land area. So towards the middle to the end of May you'll start to see many more of these, particularly in Eastern Europe. And you'll see the same in the central US. And you can see the effect as well, if you look carefully, some of these storms are associated with the mountain ranges around the world. And that's because as air is lifted up, that can help to really initiate these convective processes, to really get these big um, late spring, early summer storms going. So as we move into June, it's now the Indian Ocean basin that starts to become more active. So tropical cyclone Ashoba moving towards the western coast of India. So you can really see in this global view that it's impossible for a large storm to hide. These data are always available to weather forecasters. And you can also see the scale of the different storms. So we're now hitting the end of meteorological spring and coming into summer. For us at UMETSAT, July was special. We launched the last of the METEORSAT second generation satellites on the 15th of July. That satellite was checked out and is now stored in orbit and is now called METEORSAT 11 and will become an operational satellite when it's needed.
So here in August, if you look at the Western Pacific Ocean, just south of Japan, you'll see many cyclones being formed. At one point during the season, we actually have three cyclones simultaneously visible. And you can see the track of the cyclones. Some of them do what is called extratropical transition. And all that means is they move from being a tropical storm to being a normal storm as we would see in the, the northern areas. So if you look at the eastern Pacific towards the end of August, you'll see three storms forming simultaneously. These were storms Ignacio, Yimena and Kilo. Three very significant hurricanes developing simultaneously. And you can see just at the end of August, the beginning of September, all three of them now have well-formed eyes and eye walls. So very well-structured storms. So you can see the waves of cloud as they travel from Africa in towards the Atlantic. And these are the very first moments that can lead to cyclone formation. So these waves, some of them will become very small depressions which will grow. And here towards the end of September, we see one depression that grows and becomes a cyclone in the Caribbean. This is Hurricane Joaquin. And this storm will travel through the Caribbean, then turn north towards the Atlantic seaboard and then turn back east and travel across the Atlantic and become quite a significant storm in Europe, causing a lot of flooding to Ireland and the United Kingdom. You can see just how quickly some of these storms form. Towards the end of October, Hurricane Patricia formed off the western coast of Mexico, very rapidly forming and then turning inland and striking Mexico on the 23rd of October. And you can see how quickly the hurricanes dissipate as they then cross over the land. So the friction of the land as the weather system moves over causes the storm to dissipate very fast. One of the challenges of meteorological forecasting is to make people aware of what's coming appropriately. The UK and Ireland have worked in 2015 to name storms in part to make people aware of the more significant storms as they're coming, to raise people's awareness so they take the proper action. At the beginning of November, we saw Storm Abigail, which was the first of these named storms coming. That was on the 11th. That was very quickly followed by Storm Barney on the 17th. These storms were followed by Storm Cloda at the end of November, and then Desmond, Eve and Frank in December. All of them were significant storms, bringing significant effects to Ireland and the United Kingdom. In this animation, we're showing you the weather at any particular moment. During the course of late November, early December, there was the World Climate Summit that was happening in Paris, COP21, the Conference of the Parties, as part of the UN Framework Convention on Climate Change. What that meeting is discussing is the whole range of climate and climate change, and satellites are an important part of monitoring Earth's climate. With these data, you can see all of the Earth. For climate monitoring purposes, we have this record going back for 30 years now. So we can see what the Earth's atmosphere has done over the last 30 years and how it's changed. 